Welcome to another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, it's your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. And today's day is particularly fantastic because it's Mario Day, March 10th. Um, and of course, um, what better way to celebrate Mario Day than with an Andrew Plays episode where I play a pretty obscure Mario game. What better than Kaite Kita Mario Brothers for the Famicom Disk System, released by, in, by Nintendo in 1988. Um, basically, um, Super Mario Brothers 3 was being released in Japan in 1988, and uh, Nintendo got together with Nagatanian um, to, uh, to pr help hype up uh, that game with um, this game, Kaite Kita Mario Brothers. Um, which is basically um, an enhanced uh, version of the Famicom port of Mario Brothers, but it's on the disc system um, and has uh, better graphics, more closer to the arcade, and also better controls, making it the best way to play Mario Brothers besides the original arcade cabinet with the wide body and the two players side by side. And for those wondering, Nagatanian is a food product company in Japan, and after Super Mario Brothers became such a big success, um, they were one of the companies Nintendo partnered with to make um, Mario-related merchandise. Um, in this case, Mario food products, mainly furikake and um, curry and a bunch of other stuff, you know, typical Japanese food products. Hell, they, you might have seen some of the commercials uh, of Nintendo Nagatanian foods, and if you've ever seen the Super Mario Brothers animated movie from 1986, um, you'll you would have seen some of the um, promotion. They were actually a sponsor of the movie, so you saw their products um, sprinkled here and there. The Mario Ramen and the Mario Furikake. So yeah, they did all sorts of things, but this was probably the best thing to come out of it. Uh, this promotion. Not only is it an awesome remake of um, Mario Brothers, it also has a few little commercials sprinkled here and there for the various Mario food products that they were selling. Plus, um, directions for a contest they were having involving this game, where you could win special prizes, um, including like a special gold version of Super Mario Brothers 3, I think, I, I forget exactly. But like, they had direct, they like, had an announcement on this disc uh, game. It was actually a disc writer game, so it didn't have, like, an actual physical disc card release, to my memory. At least I don't think it did initially. It might have gotten an actual one later, but I don't remember exactly. Uh, but, uh, yeah. This had a little announcement on there, and it had more detailed instructions in the manual that came with the, with the game. So, uh, yeah. It was a, that, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. For Mario Day, we're going to play through this, and I'm going to show you all the different cool stuffs. Uh, I brought my NES controller to do it with, with hooked up to my computer. And let's get it go. Okay, so what it has here, we have original Mario Brothers, which is just the original game. Oh, uh, nothing too special besides the better graphics and controls. Then we have Nagatanian World, which uh, basically um, was part of the contest that they did. Um, <clears throat> you got, um, once, uh, you played the game, Nagatanian World is basically the same, except, from my memory, uh, once you reach, like, 100,000 and 200,000 points, you got, um, a special message they were supposed to write down as a part of the contest. I think, um, I don't remember if this was in Nagatanian World or also in the original mode, but I think there's a roulette, or a slot machine that allows you to earn an extra life to continue with after dying. Um, I don't really exactly remember if it was only in Nagatanian World or in both modes, but yeah, that's pretty cool. So, uh, we got here the Namai Toroku, or the name entry, and we got Oshirase. I oh, the Oshirase, that's the uh, contest directions, but we don't need to look at those. You can find them on YouTube. But I just wanted to show you the Namae Todoku, the name entry, because one of the cool things about this, you could enter your name for your player for the game. For both Mario and Luigi, if you're playing with two players, 
Um, I'm gonna enter my name in here. So, just just for the hell of it. So, uh, it only does, it's only in Hiragana, unfortunately. No, like, there is no, uh, in there's no, uh, Roman letters to choose from, so you can't do your English name. Luckily, I know my Japanese name, or at least the... Yeah, I know my Japanese names. The Japanese version of my name, so I could just spell it out. Ah. Uh, mm. Uh. Yeah, things with this, it's like it doesn't give you that much space usually, so you have to kind of shorten it or remove some characters. Uh. Let's see. Akasata. Ah. Uh. To. Make it dull. And then, uh. Uh. Ru. Andoru. It's not like exactly. Like. There's a little bar I put after Ru, but it doesn't have enough space for it, unfortunately. And I can't put Andy, because that'd probably be even more characters. But anyway, yeah. Uh. I meant. Yeah, it's Andoru. Then we got. Um, uh, S for your Nenre. Um, that's your age. I am 16. My birthday's in a month, but I'm still 16. It asks, uh, for your gender, if you're a girl or a boy. Um, otoko or onna? Ore wa otoko da? I am a man. Biatch. Uh, alright. And of course you can select, and then we go to Luigi if you're playing, if, if you're playing with, uh, with a second player. Uh, but since I'm going solo, I don't need to do that. So we just save my name to the the disc. Since it's a disc system game, it saves uh, your high scores and your name entry. Plus your information. Preya Todoku. Player entry. Yeah, it loads like that. So yeah, we're going to do the Nagatanian Wadudo mode. Just for the hell of it. Ah, uh, here's a commercial. Also, this game has fantastic music. Like, during the normal game, it's just the normal Mario Brothers stuff, but everything else, especially the title screen, it, the music is absolutely fantastic. Even during these commercials as well. Same for uh, this part where you have to flip the disc over. It's saying, Omoazuni Kori, uh, Ocha dukero yo nori. Um, Andrew kun fight. Uh, I don't I don't know exactly what it says, but I can understand the Andrew kun fight part. Uh, I forget. H how do you flip? Oh, I'm trying to see. I play an emulator. If you can't tell, I don't have the money for an actual disc system plus a copy of the game. Ah, uh, here it is. All right, change the side. There, it is change the side to side B. B men o seto shite kudasai. Please set side B. Sometimes it says that in Amer English, other times in Japanese, depending on the game. But yeah, it's Mario Brothers, but uh, better graphics. Look, look at how the shell creepers look. More accurate to the arcade, and also the colors are more accurate too. So they turn red when they scatter rather than purple. Not to mention. As you can tell, you can change your direction of jump in midair. How awesome is that? The only other version of Mario Brothers I know that does this is the GBA version that was pretty much on every single Mario Advance release, plus um, Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. If you ever played that or the Mario Advance games growing up, you'll definitely remember it. Um... Being that one being the only one with the with the jump controls that way. Not to mention it also had game link support for up to four people. Where this is just only two people. But it's still cool. <clears throat> Test your skill. Oh, I will. 
You know, it's already been more than a year since I started this Andrew Plays revival back in February of last year. And it feels fitting that I'm going do doing another Mario uh, game, or Mario Brothers related game, since the first game I did for this was Mario Brothers Special on the Sharp X1, as well as right after, immediately after that, Punchball Mario Brothers, um, also on the X1. So yeah, I guess it comes full circle for the full year, although technically I did do uh, a different game before this. I, uh, oh, the Mahjong game I did um, right at, before this, only about a week ago, yeah, a week ago, I think. Yeah, I remember a lot of things, but I guess not everything. I still have those moments where I forget simple things. I guess my brain can only um, can only be occupied by a certain amount of stuff before it has to make its deductions, if you know what I mean. Hello? Oh, there we go. It almost seemed like all of... It seems like the time... It seemed like the movement of time stopped for a moment there. It was... That was weird. Time for the fighter flies. You know... I should have mentioned... If it weren't... If it weren't for Mario Brothers... Uh, Mario would not have been the star of Super Mario Brothers. I don't know if you've heard this before. Basically, Mario Brothers was actually a really popular game on the Famicom during its really early days. Like, during the first two years it was out in Japan. Uh, basically, uh, like, Mario Brothers was one of the earliest releases for the Famicom. As early as September 1983... The console had only been out for, like, two months, and Mario Brothers came out. Which is pretty crazy, considering how the arcade version came out uh, right before the Famicom. Like, the it, Japan got it in June in of 83, I think, and then the U.S. Um, July. Uh, I might be wrong about that. But yeah, it was like summer of 83 when the arcades got Mario Brothers... The Game & Watch title came even before that, but it was only, like, a few months, excuse me. Uh, but Famicom got the Mario Brothers, uh, um, just right after that, only in, in September rolled around, so it was pretty crazy how they were able to crank that out so quickly. But it, it was popular, and a lot of people really sold a lot, and a lot of people really loved it. So, uh, when Nintendo was making a new, um, title to, to, uh, finished their line of Famicom cassettes, or cartridges, at least at the time before they switched to disc, making mostly disc system games, though they eventually did switch back in 87, they made Mario & Luigi the stars of the game, and made it Super Mario Brothers. And thus, the world was never the same. Besides this and the G aforementioned GBA version, probably the best home version of Mario Brothers that isn't emulating the arcade, it pro that would have to be the Atari XEGS version. There's um, another little interesting history tidbit that some might not know. Back, um, back in the early 80s, back before Nintendo started doing their own home console software the, with the Famicom and, and all that, and even then before they started doing it in America with the NES in 85, um, they had to license their stuff to other companies. They licensed Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. to Coleco for home consoles and Popeye to Parker Brothers for home consoles. Um, Atari got to, got the rights for Mario Brothers in the home consoles and home computers. They did also get the rights for Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. for computers, but for our, for consoles, they only had Mario Brothers, as well as Mario Brothers for computers. Um, and, well, they did a pretty, they did a pretty awesome Atari 2600 version of the game. It's a little janky in a way, but it's still really fun. And it's, it's, 
it's just fun in its own sort of way, and honestly, I think it was the best that Atari could do at the time. It was still a really good version, still a lot of fun. At least, th that's the way I feel. Some may not like it as much. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, they, they got to make an Atari version. They also made a version for the Atari 5200, and they were planning to do a version for the Atari um, 8-bit computers, which would have been just like the 5200 version, as shown by the screenshots that they that are available to see on the internet. But the computer version never went through, um, since Atari had to close their doors in 1984 and split into Atari Inc. and Atari Games. Atari Inc. Um, came back full swinging with the computers and the Atari 7800, though thanks to a contractual copyright loophole, they actually were able to, they still actually had some sort of rights to make new versions of Mario Brothers, um, as well as Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., even though Nintendo was publishing it themselves with the NES versions. So they were still able to, re they were still able to release um, their older versions, as well as make new versions for the 7800. Um, and well, with the uh, with the Mario Brothers, they would have put out the older one, but they apparently lost the source code for it, so they had to break make a brand new version for the XE, Atari XE from scratch. Um, and from there, they made an even better version. Um, and it's just a really awesome version, much better than the 5200 one. Honestly, I'm glad I'm glad that they made a new version. For Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr., from what I understand... Oh, there it is! There's the, uh... There's the message. Omedetou, Andrew... Andrew-kun. Uh... 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 Ju... Hya... Ju... Man... Ten... Kurio... Shimashita. Uh... Andrew... Uh, congratulations, Andrew. You got 100,000 points. Kono... Ango... O... Haga... Hagaki ni... Kaite o kute ne oi su 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 a su a i kuashiku wa oshira se o misette ne. Yeah, I think it was just saying like uh take the message or something on the postcard. Or, uh, it's because like for the contest you had to do a postcard thing. I I forget exactly what you had to do. But yeah, uh, for the Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. computer versions, they just re-released those. But the the computer version of DK was good, was really good as it is, so there was no need to make a new version either way, with or without source code, with that, with or without any sort of source code. They still had a good version on their hands, so I'm glad they just kept it the way it is. And of course, they made uh, Atari 700 versions, brand new ones, based off the NES ones, funnily enough, that were released in 1988. Um, and those were some pretty good versions. I actually have the Atari 700 version of Mario Brothers. It's pretty good. The frame rate isn't as smooth as on the NES, but it's still really fun. Um, and the graphics look really nice. Probably even better than on the, um, the NES. Or Famicom, rather. Kill crash, kill, kill the sidesteppers, kill the fighter flies. The I, the slip ices can go to hell too. I don't like them. They're mean and they don't pay their mortgage. Who even knew that slip ices could own property? Ooh, test your skill, test your skill. Oh yeah, I don't think that's something in the Famicom one that was kept from the arcade for this version, they actually dim um, the platforms for this for the third bonus stage. I, for I forgot about that. Though I managed to get through. Awesome. Phase 17. I don't think I could ever get this far in the regular Mario Brothers that just says more of how these newer controls really help. Oh, there, there's the icicles that, uh, we didn't even mention that in the Mario Brothers review because we weren't able to get that far at, um, with that. I think I, I knew, I knew about them at the time, but I forgot about them and never really bothered <coughs> getting to them, um, with the review. Because, well, 
That would have been a pain in the ass on itself. Got him. Yeah, you gotta watch out for them icicles. They're gonna go drop down and impale you, so watch out. Yeah, those fireballs are even bigger than in the arcade, so you really gotta move your ass out of the way, or else you get stung, or burned, rather. Stung is for stingers, burn is for fire. 148,080. If I had a dollar for... <laughs> if I had a dollar for every... Uh, for every... Uh, I, for I forget the line. For everything you have in your brain, I have one dollar. <laughs> SpongeBob. What a show. What a cartoon. Well, not, not that. The other... Yeah. Oh yeah. 69. Low. Tw oh, it's round. This is uh, phase 22. Damn. The little pitter power of Mario's little feet never seems to get old for me. Actually, now that I think about it, this, this is probably... I just realized... After the, uh, before Super Mario, like, after Super Mario, after this game, or, well, ever since Super Mario Brothers, it doesn't seem that there were that many Mario games where Mario's footsteps made that many noises. Y you know? It's like, after, like, like, I think that might have been, beside, like, S Super Mario Brothers might have been the very first Mario game where we don't uh, usually s where, the, where we don't see that from where we don't hear Mario's footsteps. Oh shit! Oh damn! That took that took me by surprise. Chotto matene. I'm pretty sure you already know what that means. You might have heard it a million times before. Or something I don't know. For what I'm waiting for, I don't I don't remember. I guess it has to load something, because, you know, disk system. Oh, A button o san kai o shite suru to mo o tome to kurasai. Zanen deshita. I lose. Alright, and then you got all the scores. Would I like to save? Hell yeah. Save to this.
Alright. Ah, uh, the A side. Shift B, it is on uh, Nestopia UE. I, th I think I did it right. Oh, there we go. Well, there you have it. That's Kaete Kita Mario Brothers. A fantastic version of a fantastic arcade game. If you can find some way to play this, definitely go for it. It is beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, I, I sh at least in my opinion, it is. But anyway, yeah, that's what I. So yeah, that's another Andrew plays in the books for um, and in this case for Mario Day. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did playing this game. And I hope you come back next time for another riveting Andrew plays episode. For whatever random, obscure, or s silly game that I have in store for you next time. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And as always, I'm Andrew Ambrose, and I will catch you later. Take care, guys.